Hey there guys, Headphones Neil here, back with my review for, or another review for The Mandalorian. In this case, it's going to be Season 2, Episode 6, The Tra Tragedy. So in this case, it's going to be the latest episode uh, with the synopsis of The Mandalorian and Child Travel to an Ancient Site. This is a direct follow-up to the last episode where Ahsoka Tano has, um, or tells... The Mandalorian that he needs, he can take the child, a, now we know, now known as Grogu, to the planet Tython, where there's a force nexus, so to speak, that will help him find more Jedi or those beings with force powers. So, when we start the episode, we see him, we see the Mandalorian approaching the planet, uh, playing with the child, and uh, trying to get him to understand about the playing with the ball gear shift knob thingy doesn't really work too well but it was a nice light-hearted moment in the, all of the events that have happened um so as they land they the mandalorian realizes that um he'll have to they'll have to take a slightly different route basically by a jet by a jet pack which they do um and the mandalorian places grogu on the, the pedestal but nothing happens initially in this time um the mandalorian sees a ship approaching we know as Slave One with Boba Fett. Um, Matt, um, the Mandalorian does not know this, but as they're talking, uh, we learn that Fennec Shan is still alive and she's been in servitude with Boba Fett because he saved her life. Um, we learn over the course of the discussion that Boba has been tracking the Mandalorian to reclaim his um, gear and that's all he's there for. Um, as part of the episode... Um, the Mandalorian and Boba make a deal to help protect the child if um, they help each other escape, basically. Um, because in all of the conversation, the Imperials show up with Moff Gideon and his Death Troopers. Um, in the midst of all this, um, Grogu is able to start channeling his Nexus Force powers and in a big beam, of, or not a beam, but like a circular cage of um, blue stuff that... Um, the Mandalorian is unable to penetrate in order to um, take the child and escape. Um, in this period of time, um, the Imperials dispatch some of their dark um, stormtroopers, basically, to get the child, and which they managed to do and escape. And overall, that was a very well choreographed sequence with... Now two Mandalorians take and Fennec Shan taking on the Imperial counterparts. Um, and overall it's going very well, but it's basically serving as a distraction so that the Dark Stormtrooper robot thingies can um, take the child and escape, which they managed to do. Um, by the end of the episode, we see Boba and the Mandalorian striking a deal, or completing their deal that um, Boba and Fennec will help the Mandalorian reclaim the um, child in exchange for Boba's armor. So, I so basically, it seems like that's where we're gonna how we're gonna round out the episode. Where it takes place is a good question, um, but we see that the Mandalorian is or goes to help Kara or goes to ask Kara Dune to help him break out his old kidnapping friend from the. Um, prison barge sequence episode from season one so that they can break into some, uh, some very secure location um, whether it's Camino like a friend of mine was speculating or somewhere else that we shall see but um, this is going to take a lot of um, skills in order to reclaim uh, Grogu um, so overall for being a short episode it was very action packed and very well done um, as of this recording, I've only seen it once, but I am going to watch it again to see what I miss and th the little things that I may not have noticed the first time around. But overall, it was good seeing Boba back in his armor, and I like that he reused the line that he's a simple man making his way in the universe along the lines of his father. Uh, or as his father, although it's kind of weird because it's the same actor who played Django that's now playing Boba, so... And granted, he's a clone, but it still felt kind of weird. So overall, it was very well done. Um, the one of the f 
funniest things or one of the funnier things I thought, saw and thought was actually pretty cool were the knee guns or what looked like knee guns in Boba's armor. So I'm going to watch that sequence again because it looked kind of strange, but I thought that was pretty cool where he has secret weapons or how the weapons are built into his armor. Um, as the storm in the, in the battle with the stormtroopers, what I f found kind of funny was probably just because they got a retreat order, but the stu stormtroopers start to pull out and run away. But it looks like a, the a, the run and hide gang gag from Monty Python, so it felt kind of strange, but kind of silly uh, or a kind of silly reaction on my part. And then finally, the dark stormtroopers reminded me a lot of the dark or the Iron Legion from Avengers: Age of Ultron, but all painted black, kind of like an evil version of the Iron Legion, or even a similar, a similar version of the Sentinels from the X Men: Days of Future Past story arc. Um, especially when they do that close-up shot when they're flying of their faces and of their um, thrusters in their feet, so. Um, that's not really a Marvel property yet, I want to say, but the whole association with the Iron Legion from the Avengers is a particular note because we do have Jon Favreau, um, I want to say directing the season or because he's so closely related to the, to the Mandalorian and because he's so closely tied with Marvel and Iron Man that I'm sure he, he um, drew a lot of inspiration from uh, Marvel, but overall it was a very very well choreographed scene. It very looked very well as from my point of view. So that's one of those things I definitely want to see again. And then finally, the nice touch was the ignition of the dark saber. So we get get to see a kind of slow motion. It was a quick cut as well, but we see the ignition of the dark saber as a threatening tool of Gideon with Grogu. Um, so overall, very well seen there. Very intriguing just as far as we see that when Grogu uses his force powers, he's still untrained, so he's probably expending a lot more energy than he should be or can be. So it causes him to get tired very, very easily. So that is something that uh, Gideon is exploiting very much. So I'm also kind of curious to see the flip sides to see how Gideon is going to exploit Grogu from here. And what happens as far as what powers manifest, or how he's how Gideon is exploiting those powers, or is it along the lines of the Sentinel program from X Men that um, they use the data that they use by testing Grogu during his Force usage, and they build that build that data into the Dark, dark Stormtroopers in order to find other Force users. So overall, a very good episode for being one of the shorter episodes, but I definitely can't wait to see how everything ties into place with the rest of the season. So that's all there is for this review. So if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything like that, then you can find me on Twitter at PatelN01. The website's PatelN01.com for subscription links, past episodes, and all that good stuff. And of course, you can find the show on, or support the show on Patreon at Patreon.com slash PatelN01. Um, where you get early access to content um, and things like that, and provide feedback before anyone else gets to hear the episode, so you can get your feedback uh, also read on the episodes and things like that. But that is all for this particular review. Thanks for tuning in, and until next time.